Welcome to Science Bytes, a podcast from Australia's leading supercomputing and big data research facility, the National Computational Infrastructure. You'll be hearing from some of our users about their careers, their scientific research, what excites them about the work they do, and how supercomputing and data technologies help them make scientific discoveries. Coming from all around the world and from a huge range of scientific disciplines, they are the people behind the science headlines you see every day. And now it's over to Andy, who is speaking with today's guest, Dr. Martina Lesio. Dr. Martina Lesio is a Scientia lecturer in the School of Chemistry at the University of New South Wales. Martina and her team are investigating the best uses of minerals to purify water, converting CO2 and plastic waste into energy storage, and conserving priceless marble artworks, as you do. Hi, Martina. How are you today? I'm good. How are you, Andy? Very well, thanks. Where are you joining us from today? Uh, I'm in Sydney on my home. Awesome. Now, Martina, you did your bachelor's and your master's in chemistry in Torino in Italy, and then your studies took you to a couple of prestigious universities in the US. Yeah, I did my PhD in Princeton. Um, So I spent five years there, which is like in New Jersey on the East Coast. And then I actually moved not too far from there. I moved to New York City at Columbia University, where I did a teaching postdoc. So I did some research, but mostly I was teaching undergraduate students. And then what brought you to the University of New South Wales? Uh, I guess like my partner and I were just like ready to move again and try a different country. And just like UNSW seemed like a good place for me in terms of like the work they were doing. I just felt like I, I fit right in the school I'm working in. And what first got you interested in chemistry? So I got interested in it when I started studying it in high school. And I think like right away I appreciated the way chemistry allows you to explain phenomena occurring at the macroscopic scale, but Mm -hmm. by looking at things happening at the nanoscopic scale, just looking at like tiny little molecules uh, and their behavior allows you to explain what we can actually observe with our eyes. And I always found that very fascinating. But on top of that, also chemistry has like so many environmental applications. And I've always been very passionate about environmental and sustainability aspects. And the team that you have accrued around you at uh, University of New South Wales have been doing some fantastic things. And um, like you say, um, looking at things in the nanoscale is a lot more complex than people might think of when they think of chemistry as sort of, you know, Erlenmeyer flasks and, uh, <laughs> and, and beakers and test tubes. That's not quite what you're doing. Could you explain a little bit about what you and the team have been doing with your research? Yeah. So generally... Like you said, we don't just like mix reagents in the lab and see crazy explosions or <laughs> whatever the Im- typical image is of a chemist. So we only use computers for our research and we using computers, we can model the behavior of molecules um, and materials and we can This allows us to explain experimental observations, but it also allows us to predict experimental observations. So this is a very powerful tool. And specifically, we use these computer simulations to look at a variety of materials and molecules that have sustainability applications. So some of the work we're doing, like you mentioned, is in water purification. Mm -hmm. So we've been studying these materials that are called metal organic frameworks. These are a relatively new class of materials that the community is very excited about. And like they've proven really useful in like so many different applications. And one of them is water purification. But there are over 90,000 materials of this type known at the moment. Uh, There is just like so many that can be synthesized in the lab. So it's really important that we're able to go in with computational tools and understand which of these material can, you know, do the job at best. And so that's what we're kind of doing. We're trying to understand how to design the best possible material that can help us clean up water. Yeah. So it's not simply a water filter, is it? It's a complex, like a nanoscopic mesh, a 3D mesh, and you're just catching certain molecules to get them to bind to other molecules in the mesh. It's not even like a, a sponge or anything. It's it's quite incredible. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they are very incredible materials and 
again, apparently their chemistry from the experimental point of view is like quite simple in terms of making them. So that's why people are very excited about them. But there are so many different possibilities for making them. So many different, like you mentioned, sites where the pollutant molecules can interact in the material that computational tools really allow us to like understand exactly what's going on inside the material when these are used uh, for the purpose of water purification. And is it a similar technology to what you're using for converting CO2 and plastic waste? In that case, we're using, we're looking at like other type of materials that are mm-hmm. mostly based on um, uh, metals. And these materials are generally called catalysts. So the idea is like all these type of processes, like converting CO2 or plastic waste into something useful, require a lot of energy typically, or like really high temperatures. And also they, they're not very selective in the sense that you might, you know, put CO2 or plastic waste into the process, but you can't really control really well what comes out. But if you use the right catalyst, you can possibly bring down the energy requirement for the process and you might also be able to produce exactly what you want. So again, we're using computational tools to screen different possible catalysts so that we can have the best possible process in terms of like low energy consumption and producing what we're truly interested in rather than having like, you know, a lot of different products that might not be really useful. That's very exciting to hear about the future of what could help us all in um, in Australia and worldwide. So yeah. you're saying also that it's a lot of computational stuff. So you're are you able to make some things and see how they react and then compare that against what your computer predictions were? So we don't do this ourselves, but mm-hmm. our team is really excited to collaborate with other research groups mm-hmm. uh, who are actually performing uh, experiments. So at the moment, we're still like a young research group and we have kind of like getting established here in Australia. But definitely we see that uh, happening along in like a few years. We hope that we will have a bunch of collaborators who will be happy to like test our computational predictions in the lab. That's that's the idea. Yeah. yeah. And so the calculations that you're doing, they must be pretty complex. Is that what you're relying on the uh, the NCI systems, the big data and uh, and the high performance computing for? Yeah, so definitely some of the systems we're simulating are quite demanding from the computational point of view. We, we we need a lot of processors, we need a lot of memory to run the calculations. But also, like I mentioned, for some of these research fields, there are like so many options in terms of molecules and materials. So that, like I said, for the, in the case of the metal organic frameworks that are over like 90,000 of these materials known. So we also, we not only need to run kind of big calculations, but we also need to run a lot of them. And so this is why we need access to supercomputers like GADI provided by NCI. Yeah, fantastic. What challenges uh, are you facing in your research that GADI would help you to overcome? One, the kind of like overarching one is how big the material and molecular space is for Mm -hmm. these fields. Just being able to investigate a lot of different materials or like if we're studying like, for instance, a catalyst, uh, there could be a lot of different possible like paths that the chemical reaction can go down and we need to be able to investigate a lot of them. So just like a lot that we need to simulate. But then more like on a daily basis, we can run into issues with uh, maybe calculations. They don't run as efficiently as we want, or we can't even get them to run. And mm-hmm. I have to say the the staff at the help desk from NCI is responds so quickly and they're just so knowledgeable that they've, they're they almost like, I feel like they're part of like our research group. Like they've just been like, been able to like help us so much with our research and just be able to help us progress so much faster that we would if we were on our own. And something else I also like to mention is that as a young academic who recently joined the Australian community, NCI has been like very supportive. They have like dedicated computer time grants for like younger academics and they run like workshops to help us like training 
ourselves or our students. So the challenges associated with the research itself, but there are also challenges associated with just like being a researcher and establishing uh, myself. And I feel like NCI is like being helpful, like on all fronts. Awesome. Yeah. So how has um, working with high performance computing changed the way that you approach your work? Um, when I was like thinking of myself as like an independent academic leading my research group, I always thought I would be kind of in charge and responsible for everything. But then once I started working with NCI and reaching out to the staff, the people who work there, I realized that I could just count on them for mm -hmm. like all the computational issues or like, again, if we needed to like make things go faster or run more efficiently, we didn't have to do it all ourselves. We could really just count on like the experts at NCI who, who are actually really knowledgeable, even like with the software that we use and, and can provide really helpful advice. So I think it just helped me understand that we don't don't need to be an expert at everything. You can like delegate and like count on other people um, who can really boost your research. Hmm. And I mentioned near the start of this interview that you also have been working with conserving marble for priceless artworks and artifacts in uh, in Italy. Is that, is that something that you've benefited from the NCI systems in um, in researching? Yeah, so we've uh, started doing some work on that in the past couple of years, and we have definitely performed some of our um, simulations on Gadi for that project as well. And it's been really helpful because for this specific project, we're looking at how the marble surface interacts with uh, water when, when it's exposed to water, which mm -hmm. can cause damage to it, but also when it's exposed to like organic solvents that are used in the conservation treatment. And these type of simulations to be informative require to use a very large model system with like hundreds and hundreds of molecules. So they are mm -hmm. quite computationally intensive and uh, we definitely would have not been able to run this kind of locally on our computers. And so NCI has definitely been a key in this project as well. Very cool. And what's the, uh, is there any big new development in the pipeline in chemistry that you're looking forward to seeing come to fruition? Um, I think like among the topics we are researching, I think the plastic recycling or better plastic upcycling, that's like the new, new thing is the most exciting one. So the idea of like converting plastic waste back into what it was, but even maybe converted into a product with even higher value. Mm. Um, that's like a very exciting field that it's only just started becoming kind of popular in the scientific literature. So I think there is going to be a lot of work coming out and we, we hope to be like a big part of it. Yes. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed <laughs> for you. your team and for the planet. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what part of your work do you love the most, Martina? I think uh, in general, I love that it's a team, teamwork most of the time. Uh, it involves like a lot of interaction with like my students in my research group, my colleagues, and also the students I teach. I just don't like working on my own and I just yeah love being with others and interacting with them and I absolutely uh, love teaching so I think yeah that, that would be what I enjoy the most about it yes wonderful well Dr <laughs> Martina Alessio thank you so much for joining us today thank you so much Andy and a big thanks to you as well for listening to Science Bites. You can catch up with Martina on Twitter at Martina underscore Lessio. NCI is on Twitter as well at NCI News and on LinkedIn as National Computational Infrastructure. Bye for now.